I'd like to invite uh, John Louis to give his talk on, on uh, interventional radiology. He's a part of our GI group, and uh, you'll see as you put this puzzle together that we have a very large group, all of whom contribute their own uh, perspectives and expertise focusing on your types of tumors. So thank you, John. Great. Uh, so my name is John Louis. I'm an interventional radiologist, and today I'll be talking about how interventional oncology can help you. So let me just introduce my team. This is uh, seven of us in interventional radiology. We just hired two more, so it's nine. Each one of us has a particular specialty, and mine is interventional oncology. So this is where I work every single day. I would say I'm the luckiest guy in the world because I get to uh, get paid to play video games every single day, <laughs> essentially. I puncture uh, the artery, travel up uh, to where I need to work, and it's all through uh, using small equipment, and I'm using a real-time x-ray machine to see what I'm doing inside of the patient. So I'm looking at these monitors while using my hands to manipulate uh, equipment inside the patient. It's like the operating room, sterile environment, except I'm wearing lead underneath all this. Um, the tools we use, needles, uh, wires, small catheters, they're all very small equipment because this is I, what I um, describe as building a ship in a bottle because it's very exact work and very small because we're all doing this through a small puncture in the groin. So these are the things, uh, the treatments that I have to offer and that's uh, ablation, which is burning or freezing tumors by putting a needle inside the liver. Uh, transarterial chemoembolization, which is delivering chemotherapy directly to the tumor instead of blasting the entire body. And I'll focus today on radioembolization, which is delivering small radioactive beads to the liver and basically uh, radiating the tumor from the inside out. So what is radioembolization? Well, I'm delivering high doses of radiation uh, to the tumors that start in the liver or travel to the liver. And just to give you an idea of how much radiation, it takes only 70 gray to kill tumors, but I'm delivering anywhere from 100 to 3,000 gray. And what you see is uh, this small little tube uh, delivering these little particles or radioactive beads to the tumors and then radiating them from the inside out. I can really only treat the liver. It's uh, my favorite organ. It has a dual blood supply. Um, the portal vein, which supplies about 70% of the blood supply, and the hepatic artery, which supplies about uh, 20 to 30% of the blood supply. If we were just to inject the uh, particles inside the hepatic artery, they would just randomly distribute throughout the liver. However, you put a tumor there, which is really hungry and, as Dr. V uh, Fisher described, very hypervascular, it sucks up these little beads and concentrates them inside the tumors themselves and reduce the amount of damage to the surrounding good liver. So what I'm doing is radiating the tumor from the inside out compared to radiation oncology, which is uh, bringing the radiation from outside in. So here's a picture of the little beads uh, under an electron microscope. They're really small, 30 microns, compared to a human hair, which is right here. Average is about 70 uh, microns. So they're really small, kind of invisible to the naked eye. There are two flavors, Cerspheres, Therospheres, both FDA approved. Cerspheres is for colorectal cancer. Therospheres is for uh, hepatocellular carcinoma. We use them off-label for neuroendocrine uh, tumors. And this is what they look like when uh, delivered to me. They look like powder suspended in uh, fluid, and they're protected by uh, lead and acrylic. So the active ingredient is uh, yttrium-90, and uh, it's made in a nuclear reactor in Australia and uh, Canada. It's FedExed to me on the day of the procedure, and when the patient arrives, I'll deliver them because they're hot and they decay. The uh, way they work is they emit beta uh, particles, and that essentially is high dose of radiation in very short distances, affecting only about 2.5 millimeters away from the beads, and <clears throat> maximum penetration about 11 millimeters. Half-life is 64 hours, meaning half the radiation is gone. In, uh, I mean, six, in 64 hours, half the radiation is gone. People are kind of cold, no radiation in a month. They're attached to biocompatible beads. The beads, or the delivery system, stays with inside you, but you don't feel them. Who's a candidate? Um, if you're unable to get a good surgery from Dr. Norton or Dr. Pulsides, you're symptomatic, um, having you know, diarrhea, flushing, 
those are the people uh, who would benefit from this kind of procedure. The tumors need to be predominantly within the liver. Um, I unfortunately can't treat outside the liver. So if you have disease primarily in the liver, then you may be a candidate. It's okay if you have a few tumors um, in the lung or other locations. The question I always ask is, what's going to kill you? Is it going to be the small little lymph node or the big tumor in the liver? So you'll see uh, an oncologist or a tumor board and then get referred to us. We'll see you in clinic and we'll do this procedure in two outpatient procedures, meaning no overnight stay in the hospital at all. So the first outpatient procedure is essentially we'll do a detailed map of the liver, looking for arteries that feed the tumors, but more importantly, look for arteries that lead away from the uh, liver to adjacent organs like the stomach or the duodenum, and we'll per permanently plug them up with uh, platinum coils, because I don't want any of the little beads to go into the stomach or duodenum because they can cause non-healing ulcers. And this is what keeps me up at night and I'm really afraid of, is these small little beads getting into the stomach and causing ulcers, which can be extremely painful and um, tough for the patients. And so I'll routinely plug up these arteries that go to the stomach and duodenum and any additional arteries that lead outside the liver. Here's an example of what I see, and this is a picture of the artery leading to the liver. And I'll look for the arteries that go away from the liver. This one goes to the uh, pancreas and the duodenum, so I'll plug that up with a coil. Uh, this one's going to the stomach, and I'll plug that up as well. And this one's going to the pancreas, I'll plug that up. And until it's, I feel it's safe for me to deliver my radioactive particles. After I make it safe, I'll inject in a test dose to see what would happen if I were to inject these radioactive particles. Sort of like a simulated dry run uh, with a radioactive, harmlessly uh, tagged, uh, macrogated albumin, which is similar in size. The majority of those uh, simulated dose will stay in the liver. A portion of it will go to the lung. Then I do my calculations, and then I'll order the dose from uh, the nuclear reactor in Australia or Canada, um, Canada and have that FedExed over. Then I'll deliver it in this uh, fancy contraption here uh, to shield myself and the patient <laughs> from uh, abnormal amounts of radiation. And that's one contraption, and here's our second contraption. Since the beads are invisible to the naked eye, uh, there's a radiation physicist running around with a Geiger counter making sure I don't spill it anywhere and making sure it gets inside the patient. Um, what I tell people in terms of radiation safety, because people are worried about, well, what happens when I go home? Can I sit next to my husband or my wife? Well, I tell people, uh, stay away from children and pregnant women three feet for three days. What to expect afterwards? The majority of my patients will feel tired, poor appetite. That's by far the most common. Uh, a quarter of the patients will feel pain or nausea for the, about the first week. Uh, if you're really young, I'd say in your 20s and 30s, you'll recover within days. If you're in your 80s and I'm treating you, it'll take a longer time to recover. So I would tell the people who are in their 80s, I would say a month before you feel normal again and you're gonna feel really tired you may have low-grade fevers from the tumors dying and uh, the particles, I mean, the chemicals being released. And the complications I worry about most, even though we're really careful plugging up all these arteries that go outside the liver, I still get ulcers in about 6% of patients. And sometimes I give too much radiation and that happens in about 0 to 4% of patients where there's too much radiation and it can injure the uh, liver. Um, those are the things that I primarily think about. And looking at the data, uh, I think it's important to know that it helps people uh, reduce their symptoms about 80% of the time and uh, shrinks tumors in about 60% of the time. And it may uh, improve people's uh, survival. It's not a cure, um, I would like to say that. Uh, I cannot, I never promise a cure for uh, patients who have metastatic disease to the liver where I'm treating with radioembolization or chemoembolization. I think for that, you'll have to um, turn to the surgeons. So here's an example, just like uh, Dr. Fisher showed, a uh, CT scan uh, with these hypervascular uh, tumors all throughout the liver. It's all these big, bright light bulb dots. And here's the spine, the spleen. Here's the entire liver there. 
And after I treat with radioembolization, the things that are left that are bright are the vessels, and these bright tumors are gone. And the things that you see here are scars. And of course, results uh, may vary. This is probably one of the more impressive ones where we have a complete response within the uh, liver. For this patient, the tumors went away in the liver. However, they developed uh, flank pain on the right and the tumors outside the liver where I could not touch previously got bigger. So here's a adrenal gland with the large tumor causing flank pain. Fortunately, because it was large enough, I was able to do a chemo embolization and bring the fight directly to the tumor and uh, bring the chemo there, shrink it, and the pain went away. So in, in conclusion, I'd say, although this is not a cure, it's an effective uh, treatment for decreasing symptoms uh, improving survival, and uh, improving quality of life. It's well tolerated. There's no overnight stay in the hospital. This is an outpatient uh, procedure, minimally invasive. I call it Band-Aid surgery because literally you wake up with a Band-Aid. Oh, that doesn't project really well, but that's my nine-month-old. <laughs>